Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to draw a hand-drawn rose and polka dot pattern in Illustrator. This is the pattern that we're going to be making in this video. I'm going to show you how you can draw these rose shapes very easily in Illustrator and then how you can assemble it inside a single object with a polka dot pattern behind it that you're going to create as well and a fill color. The fill color can be changed to change the entire look of this item. Now the rose pattern that we're going to be creating is going to look like this and we're going to be drawing it very easily using the pencil and the blob brush in Illustrator. And the inspiration for this all came from a tissue box. So it's a tissue box that I had on my desk and I looked at the pattern and thought, hmm, that looks pretty interesting. I wonder if we can recreate that in Illustrator. And of course we can. And here is the video to show you exactly how to do it. Now to get started with our rose pattern, I'm going to choose File and then New. I'm starting with a document, 600 points by 600 points. It doesn't really matter how big it is, but you will want RGB color mode and click OK. Now I'm going to use the pencil tool. I'm going to double click the pencil tool first of all so that we can set some values for it. On the fidelity slider, you'll want to be slightly towards accurate rather than smooth because you want some wiggles in your lines and you want to deselect Keep Selected. So in actual fact, just deselect the first four checkboxes and you should be pretty right and click OK. We also don't want a fill, so I'm going to disable the fill so that we just have a stroke. And I'm going to increase the stroke value to about four or five points. That'll be a good start. And now I'm going to draw the inside of my rose, which is a sort of little comma sort of shape shape. And adding a few wiggles is a good idea. You'll see that the shape is automatically deselected. That was one of the settings that we did in the pencil tool and just makes it a little bit easier to draw this shape. And now I'm going to draw around an inner petal here around about two thirds of the way around the rose. And then we'll go the other way. And each time we'll be overlapping the petal that we drew just previously. And you want to give these a little bit of a wiggle as you go because that gives them that sort of classic rose shape. If you make a mistake, as I've just done, press Ctrl or Command Z and then just redraw your line. I think I might redraw that one too. And when you've got the basic rose shape, you're going to add the leaves. I'm just going to add one more petal here just to finish off the rose shape. And the leaves are just going to be wiggles again. I'm going to wiggle this out into this sort of shape. And I'll draw the center of the leaf. And I'm going to put leaves on three of the sides of this rose. But you could put it on just two sides or you could put four. It doesn't really matter what you choose to do. I've just gone over the edge of the artboard here. It doesn't matter, it's just fine. So once you've drawn out the basic rose, you're going to go ahead and draw a second rose. And I'm going to do that now, speed up the video, and we'll come back to doing the colouring in just a minute. Now I've gone ahead and I now have my two rose shapes but they need a little bit of finessing before we proceed. I'm going to select the selection tool and drag over both of the roses. And then from the stroke drop down here, I'm going to make a setting. I'm going to set it to round cap and I'm also going to set it to round join. That's going to round off the ends of each of these lines and also the pointy bits here. It'll just give the roses a slightly better look. Now we're ready to go and do the colouring. I'm going to open up the layers palette here because I just want to show you that the roses are assembled right now. The lines are on a layer. And what I want to do is to put the colouring on the layer underneath. So we could actually go and grab this particular rose and group it. Let's just press Ctrl or Command G to group those petals and leaves into one rose. And let's go and do the same for this one, Ctrl or Command G. And so that simplifies the layers palette here so that each of the roses is grouped together. 
I'm going to add a new layer by clicking here on the Create New Layer icon and I'm going to drag it right underneath the current layer. Now the layer's gone inside the other layer, so I'm just going to give it a better drag so that it's out and independent. And the colouring is going to go underneath the existing layer. I'm just going to move this rose back in a little bit so it's not off the edge of the artboard. And let's just position this one a little bit more neatly. And let's lock down both of them. So I'm going to click the lock icon so that the black areas are not going to move and they're also not going to be affected if I have to erase some of my colour. I'm going to target this layer as being the layer that I'm drawing on. And now let's go and get some colour. So I'm going to open my swatches panel and I'm going to pick up a colour for my rose. So I'm going here to click on the fill icon and let's go and get a sort of pinky fill for this rose. I'm thinking this is pretty good and I don't want any stroke at all. But because we're going to be using the blob brush and because the blob brush works a little bit differently than we might expect, we're actually going to make this the stroke colour, not the fill colour, because that's the way the blob brush works. And the blob brush is a really great tool here for actually colouring our rows. So I'm going to the brush tool and I'm going to click here on the blob brush tool. I'm just going to test the size. It's a little bit big, so I'm just going to decrease the size by using the square bracket on the keyboard. You can also double click the blob brush to adjust its size if you want to. You just adjust it here. And now I can get started painting. Let's just make sure that it's going to go in the right place. I'm going to select my layers palette, just make sure that I've got this particular layer targeted. And when I start painting, the blob brush should be painting on that layer. If it isn't, we can just fix it. No, it's fine, it's gone on that layer. So I'm just going to roughly paint over this shape. And you can see that the nice thing about using the blob brush underneath the black layer is that the black layer, the lines are still appearing. The blob brush is appearing behind it or the colouring is appearing behind it. So we don't have to do quite so much work with our colouring and we don't have to be really quite so neat because the edges of our colouring are behind the black lines. So I'm just going to colour a few areas of this rose and then I'm going to select a second colour. So let's just go to the swatches palette. I'm actually going to create a new swatch group, a new colour group. So I'll just add that in here with the pink that we're currently using. And now let's go and get another colour to use. So I'll just target this pink. I'm actually going to bring it down into this colour group so it's right there if we need it. And we will need it in a minute. And I'm going to colour the rest of the rows using this. And if I make a mistake, I'm just going to press the Control Z or Command Z on a Mac just to undo it. And I'm just alternating these two colours for the rows. Now you don't have to be too careful about how you're colouring because the idea of this is that it's a fairly sort of organic colouring job. You can leave spaces in there if you wish. And now having done this rose, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Having done that, I'm going to go and select my green colours. So I'm actually going to just bring them down into the palette here. And I'm going to do half of each of these leaves in one of the greens and the other half in the other. Now once you've completed the leaves, you can tidy them up if you want to. I'm going to grab the zoom tool and let's just zoom into an area that we might want to tidy up just in here. And I'm going to grab the eraser tool. I'm going to shrink it down so that it's about the size that I want to use. The important part here is that I've locked down the layers that have the black on them because that means that the eraser tool can't function on those layers. It's going to look as if it's carving away that black, but in actual fact it can't because it's protected. If you don't do that, the black will disappear and that's not what you want. And you can just work around the outside here and just erase away the bits that you don't want. And you could fill in the bits if you wanted to. I'm actually going to leave them not filled in. 
to go back to viewing the roses at full size, Control or Command Zero. Just going to do a small touch up here. But there's no necessity to do the touch up if you don't want, and it's certainly going to look a little bit more organic and interesting if there is some colour outside the area of these flowers. Now that we've done this, let's go ahead and group these pieces. So I'm going to grab everything that belongs to this particular flower and press again Control or Command G to group them into a single object. And again over here. So I have just two shapes. You can see that things have moved layers now and I've got a group that is the black outline for this flower and then the other elements in that group are the coloured items and then I've got one for the second flower. What we need to do now is to create this as a pattern. So I'm going to go and grab this particular piece and I'm going to position this one over here. I'm going to duplicate this one by pressing Alt as I drag away a duplicate of this and I'm going to do the same thing over here just to start my pattern off. Now if I want to I could also rotate these at this point just to create something a little bit more visually varied. So if this is the starting point for my pattern I'm now going to select all four of these objects and choose Object, Pattern, Make. And now I can just test my pattern to make sure that it's looking OK. You can see that I've got a slight problem here in that these leaves are probably a little bit too close to each other. So I'm going to grab this shape and just rotate it a little bit. That will allow me to bring in my shape or to make sure that there's a little bit of breathing space here around the leaves so that there's room between the two of them. I'm also thinking that there's going to be a pretty big gap in here so if I take this shape and just rotate it and move it up a little bit, well that hasn't actually solved my problem much at all because I've got two leaves running into each other now. Let's just see if that's not a better solution for just filling in these spaces. Just want to make sure that my pattern just looks comfortable. And when I'm happy with it, I'm just going to click Done. And now I can move these pieces out of the way. I'm just going to move them off the artboard. And I'm going to create a rectangle that is the shape of the artboard. Now you can draw this using the rectangle tool or there's also a script that I show you in one of my other videos where you can actually draw a rectangle the shape of the artboard using a script. But for now I've just drawn it myself. And now I want to flip this so that we're looking at the fill of this shape and I'm going to go ahead and grab the swatch, the pattern swatch that we just made. Now it's obviously huge, but we can resize it by choosing Object Transform and we're going to choose Scale. Now I don't want to transform the object because the rectangle is a good size, it's the pattern that's not. And let's just reduce it to say 40% and see what it looks like by clicking the preview on. Well, it's probably still a little bit big for me, so let's just go to 35%. And I'll just click OK. Now I want this pattern to have a polka dot pattern directly underneath it. So let's go ahead now and create the polka dot pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and select the ellipse tool and I'm going to deselect the current selection because at the moment I have this rectangle selected so I'm going to make sure that that's not selected anymore. Let's go back to the ellipse tool. Let's set the fill color here to be something like a blue for now. And I'm just going to drag here outside of the artboard. I think I'm outside the artboard. I've sort of lost my mouse here. I'm just going to drag a dot. And I'm going to make this into a pattern. So I'm going to choose Object, Pattern, Make. And just click OK. And now we're focusing on just this as a pattern. So what I want to do is I want to spread these dots apart. So I'm going to lock them together by clicking on this icon and then just shift tap in here to spread them apart so that they look a bit more like the pattern that I want. 
I also want this to be a brick by row because I want them to be offset from each other and by half is looking pretty good. So if I were happy with this in normal circumstances, I'd just click done. But I actually want this to be a white polka dot pattern. The reason why I made it blue to start off with is that as soon as I turn it white right now, you're not going to be able to see it. So I always make it as blue and then change the color as the last thing before I create as a pattern. So I'm just going to click here to make it white. We know that the pattern is perfect because it was a minute ago. All we've done is change the color and I'll click done. And so now it's a white pattern. I can get rid of this blue polka dot. I don't need it anymore. Let's go to the Laz palette and let's find our pattern filled piece. And that's this here. It's this rectangle here that is filled with the pattern. I'm going to click here on the appearance panel. And that lets me see that the fill for this piece or this rectangle is this pattern. I'm going to add a second fill. So I'm going to click here on Add New Fill. And I'm going to move this to below the current fill so that my polka dot is going to go in behind the current flowers. And I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click on my polka dot pattern. Now the polka dots are there but we can't see them because it's white on white. So now we get to put another layer behind the roses and this is going to be the colour that's going to appear behind the polka dots. So again, new fill colour. I'm going to make sure that I drag this below and then I'm going to set it to just a solid colour. And I'm going to choose a sort of yellow. And as soon as I click on the yellow, you can see the pattern, you can see the polka dots and you can see the roses. In fact, if I choose something a little bit darker, it's going to be even easier to see. Well, let's choose this colour. Now, I think my polka dots are a little on the big side, so I'm going to target this fill layer for now, and then I'm going to choose Object Transform Scale. And you can see that immediately I do that, the settings that we had before are being applied, but they're only being applied to this fill layer, not the roses. The scale of the polka dot has been reduced to 35%. The object itself, the rectangle, has not been transformed, only the pattern. So I actually want this particular pattern to be a little bit larger. So I'm going to set it to 50% and just try that. I'm really happy with that, so I'll click OK. So this rectangle shape that is the size of the artboard has a pattern fill, which is the roses. Then it's got a polka dot fill behind that and then it's got a solid colour fill, which can be changed by simply clicking on that fill and just changing it to a different colour. And the effect is very different for every colour that we select. So there's a way to create a rather quaint little rose pattern in Illustrator and to create a shape that is filled with not only that pattern but also a polka dot pattern behind it and then a solid colour fill, any one of which could be disabled or recolored as you wish. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.